Nothing lasts forever. This is especially true in sports, and combat sports in particular. As the saying goes, Father Time is undefeated, and no matter how good a fighter looks today, they will always eventually decline and be surpassed by the next generation. This was echoed by George St. Pierre himself, who many consider to be the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. Of course, the Canadian was able to retire on top, which is a rarity in combat sports. However, when asked about current welterweight champion Kumara Usman and their legacies, St. Pierre surprised many with his answer. In terms of accomplishment, it is different. It's different. I've done stuff that he didn't do yet, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. But as painful as it could be for any athlete to admit it, the athletes of today's are normally better than the athlete of yesterday. As good as the athletes of today are, the athletes of tomorrow will be better. That's how it is. I don't think it's because the guys are better, it's because the technology is better. You know, I don't care who you are. Even if you are Usain Bolt and you beat the world record, in a few years, there's another guy who will come and beat your record. You know, of course, time for time, maybe he didn't, he didn't win the 11 title, but he's raising the bar. And if I don't admit that, that means I insult the entire UFC roster. That means I, I'm saying that the sport is regressing and it's not true. I believe the sport is getting better. It's almost like hearing a philosopher, but even crazier is hearing it from him. Oftentimes, older fighters could have trouble passing the torch onto the next generations because they would also have to come to terms with the fact that their career is coming to an end. But whether you accept it or not, it's coming. And for the newer guys that are coming in, implementing your strategies, honoring your career, ultimately reminding us all of you. They are a living proof that your life has been an influence to many. You've done your job. This guy was my father's favorite fighter. You know, it's like, I grew up watching his fights. You know, it's honor stay with him here. And you know, it's my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. One of my favorite quotes from the great late Kobe Bryant goes as follows. It's the one thing you can control. You are responsible for how people remember you. Or don't. So don't take it lightly. If you do it right, your game will live on in others. You'll be imitated and emulated by those you played with those you played against, and those who never saw you play at all. So leave everything on the court. Leave the game better than you found it. And when it comes time for you to leave, leave a legend. Welcome to the fighting business. If it's your first time on this channel, first and foremost, make yourself at home. And for everyone else that decided to spend a couple precious minutes of your day, I appreciate you greatly. Today, we look at some fighters that have reminded us of another, not only through their accolades, but their upbringing, their fighting style, or simply a coincidental similar appearance. Let's look into some fighters that are willingly or not passing the torch onto the next generation. Who gives a f the Irish are back! He's literally done what, what I've dreamed of, being a young fighter with, a, mind, with a, a mindset of being the best. You know who Conor McGregor is. I know who Conor McGregor is. Your next door neighbor probably knows who Conor McGregor is. After all, the Irishman is not only the biggest star in mixed martial arts history, but also one of the highest paid and well-known athletes in the world today. I have an unhealthy obsession with spending money, but I have a healthy obsession with making it. So it's all good. A big reason for his success was not only his devastating yet accurate left hand and exciting stand-up style, but also his trash talk and how he predicted his fights would go. So I said I'd knock him out in the fourth round, and I knocked him out in the fourth round. You can call me Mystic Matt because I predict these things. It's certainly hard for anyone to emulate him, but as far as the closest thing to the notorious, look no further than another Irishman in Ian Gary. I want to say. That's a tremendous finish there for you, bud, right? I love it, mate. I fucking love it. The takeoff of part two. Gary is a six foot three welterweight who recently made his debut for the UFC. And just as McGregor did, coming into the UFC as the Cage Warrior champion, defeating Jordan Williams in his debut with a beautifully timed right hand to earn the first round knockout victory at UFC 268 back in November. Oh! That's a mad scene, lads, yeah? The step back, back part on all your throw. My God, man, what the fuck? Like, I'm, I'm all over the place after that. 24 years of age, he is aptly nicknamed the Future. And if he continues to remain undefeated, the UFC may have found once again the next Irish star. 
The second I landed the punch, I knew it was over. Like, I, there was no way he was, he was, he was, again, he was finishing that fight. Like, I knew it was landed. I knew it was over. Cracked him again. Done. Right. Walk off. While we're yet to see any real trash talk from him, similar to the level of McGregor, everything else is pretty much there to see including the confidence going by what Gary said following his UFC debut win. There was only one Irishman that took over the UFC. Now it's my turn. A wise Irishman once said before me, he stepped in this very cage and he said, We're not here just to take part. We're here to take over. And this is the takeover part two. Good luck to you, sir. I want to be like Habib, you know. He's a great man, you know. He's... Champion. Although Khabib Nurmagomedov is retired, it's easy to forget that he only competed just over a year ago when he submitted Justin Gaethje to defend his lightweight crown for the third time in a row. Like St. Pierre, Nurmagomedov was able to retire on top, and even more impressively so, as he not only did it with a 29-0 record, but without so much as suffering a cut, let alone a knockdown throughout his UFC career. He has only lost one round, one round, Chael in his UFC career that was round three against Conor McGregor. His high level grappling and wrestling was a big factor and virtually every other Dagestani fighter is now compared to the Eagle and with good reason. You know, we talk about the GOAT very often. Khabib is, you know, one of, isn't the argument because he has the most dominant career of all martial art. With Nurmagomedov's retirement, opportunities arose for many in the lightweight division and current champion Charles Oliveira probably benefited the most. However, another Dagestani is looking to benefit as well and is the one many believe to be the next Nurmagomedov. If you're a regular MMA viewer, you probably know who we're talking about. Who do you think is the next best lightweight? Like end of the year, beginning of next year, it's gonna be Islam Mahajib. Maybe people think, oh, I'm just promoting. No, it's like, I know how good this kid is. That dude's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. His arms, he's, he's for real. That, that grappling, serious. Even if you put their similar looks aside, Mahachev is virtually the same fighter as Nurmagomedov. There are some slight differences though. While Nurmagomedov likes to ground and pound his opponent and trash talk to them. Let's talk now. Let's talk. Mahachev is more submission oriented as he is always looking to get the tap whenever possible. His last three wins have notably come through an arm triangle choke, a rear naked choke, and an arm bar just to further showcase his versatility. But overall, the game plan is pretty much the same. Take your opponent down, break them, and look to finish them. It's no wonder Mahachev has struggled to get fights over the years, but now more than ever, he is closing in on that elusive title shots. He faces Benil Dariush next month, and a decisive victory over him would not only make it 10 wins in a row, should all but guarantee him the next crack at the title. There would be no better way for Nurmagomedov to symbolically pass the torch than to have his teammates and friend in Mahachev become the next lightweight champion. You can't speak of Khabib Nurmagomedov without mentioning Tony Ferguson. While he is currently in a three fight losing skid, at his pump, Ferguson was arguably the most dangerous, creative, and scariest fighter in the lightweight division. The only Tony Ferguson story I have ever told, which is what an incredibly hard worker Tony was. The man known as El Kukui embarked on a legendary 12-fight winning streak that saw him break and bloody fighters up with his sheer volume and pace. Rafael Dos Santos, Edson Barbosa, Donald Cerrone, Kevin Lee, Anthony Pettis, those are just some of the names who couldn't keep up with Ferguson elbows, jabs, hooks, front kicks, knees, and much more. You could hurt Ferguson, but that's when you start to lose the fight as he always came back and got the win. Unfortunately, we never got to see the dream fight we all wanted with Ferguson and Nurmagomedov as it was remarkably booked five times only for it to fail on all five occasions. And when Justin Gaethje was booked as the replacement to fight Ferguson for the interim lightweight title in May of 2020, many were excited for a great fight but still believed Ferguson would come out on top and face the Eagle. He had his moments, but for most of the fight it was Ferguson getting bloodied and battered by some of Gaethje's well-known power shots. Ferguson had no quit in him as he kept going until his body simply couldn't. And the referee 
stopped the fight in the fifth round. Many believe taking that much damage would change Ferguson's career for the worse, and so far, that seems to be true. He has now lost three in a row as he seemingly lost all his confidence with very little offense displayed in his last two fights. Every fucking person out here except for this guy right here that's sitting next to me. I'm gonna be real, man. One of those fights was against Charles Oliveira who completely dominated Ferguson on the ground and would have submitted him with an arm bar if not for Ferguson's unbelievable pain tolerance. Given their similar looks, many joke that Ferguson had passed the torch to Oliveira and had even transferred his soul to him to have a younger body. Tony Ferguson needed to take a big risk and give an opportunity to a young man who everybody else was taking opportunities from. Tony did just that. Tony Ferguson should be Charles Oliveira's hero as of this moment. And that certainly looks to be the case given how Oliveira has fought in his next encounters. He would get hurt against Chandler before coming back and getting the TKO win to become the new lightweight champion. He was dropped and hurt by Dustin Poirier only to put a pace on him with volume as well as dominating on the ground before submitting him with a rear naked choke. I'm a world champion. I'm the man. They talk, I do it. The comebacks aside, Oliveira has also improved his strikings, leaps and bounds and just like Ferguson, utilizes all his body parts with knees, front kicks and elbows. If the division thought they got rid of Ferguson for good, Oliveira is proving that's far from the case. Especially like the type of fighter he is. Like I've always like seen it and I've always like really been a big fan of that type of style. If anyone had a breakout year in 2019, it was Jorge Masvidal. Game bread started off with a devastating knockout of Darren Till before he delivered arguably the most viral knockout ever when he need Ben Askren to sleep in a matter of seconds. Why the flying knee? Because he's a bum. He would then get his first money fight where he battered Nate Diaz over three rounds at Madison Square Garden before the doctor had to call the stop to the contest. After a number of years in the sport, Masvidal has finally become a star and is being recognized for his skills and hard work. It wasn't just a catchphrase or attitude. Fans appreciated Masvidal as a fighter, whether it was his crisp boxing, which is some of the best in the sport, his chin, and ability to recover, or his vicious body kicks. But however, age gets the best of all of us. And Masvidal, now 37, and on a two-fight losing streak after successive defeats to Kamar Usman, in the second, which was a devastating knockout last year and the first time Masvidal had ever been knocked out cold. It remains to be seen how he'll look when he returns to action. But there is certainly one up and coming fighter who reminds many of Masvidal, and that's Bantamweight prospect Adrian Yanez. I gotta say, Yanez reminds me of early UFC Strike Force days, Jorge Masvidal. The way he moves, wow. his boxing style. Other than looking like a younger Masvidal, Yanez also has a boxing background which he has utilized to good effect in the UFC so far. He's 4 0 in the UFC with 3 KOs. But it was his TKO win over Brady on the Contender Series that earned him the shot at the UFC in the first place. His crisp boxing was on display against Huni, and a comparison with Masvidal began all the way back then. Of course, Giannis wants to be his own fighter, but he's certainly flattered by the comparisons. Oh man, I, any comparisons is good, man. But at the same time, like I'm my own person, you know. I'm I'm, I'm Giannis, you know. I'm Adrian Giannis, so I'm gonna go out there and just try to, you know, show everybody that I'm me. Like I've said in the intro, I hope fighters take this as a huge compliment and a sign of respect for their years of hard work. No matter the wins or loss, the real success is leaving a mark on a game you've sacrificed your life to and getting honored in the process. If you die tomorrow, will people remember you? Well, I do hope you remember me and you come back for more. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.